were in Austinville, uh, uh, Virginia, and I found out that Austinville was begun by the Austin family, and uh, one of the family members was, uh, uh, he, he uh, migrated to Texas, and you notice they have Austin, Texas as the capital, uh, was named after him. Um, yeah. So uh, it's uh, oh that's neat. I, I enjoy hearing history of different churches and how how they impact yeah you know, how they have an impact upon life in the communities around them and even farther away. Well, this church has been part of this community for over a hundred years. What was the year? When did it begin? Eighteen eighty nine. So well over a hundred years. And uh, it has had an impact on the community, you know, it had an impact on the lives of a lot of people throughout the years. Uh, the church has had a strong influence and even beyond. See, many lives have been influenced through the ministry of this church. We may not think about it, may not realize it, but if you start looking back, you will see how somebody touched somebody's life here and the differences we make as we reach out as the church of God. And uh, so, you know, one of the sad things though that's taking place here as it does in almost all churches is that a lot of young people uh, have moved away, others just stopped coming and the congregation is getting older and there are fewer people. What really complicated it was when COVID-19 hit, or yeah, I guess 19, COVID, COVID hit and we couldn't meet. And then people who used to come before aren't coming. And you know, people got out of the habit, they settled in, uh, probably have some a lot better preachers on TV, but that's okay too. But, uh, but anyways, it's discouraging. We wonder why people in this community aren't interested in the church, not just our church, there's other churches around. Uh, you know, People begin in the church may wonder if the church has any kind of influence in the community anymore. We wonder if the church has any impact in the lives of people like it used to have. Well, I've got good news for you. We do have an influence. We may not see it, but we do impact the lives of people. It may not be very many, but God has established his church. This church still impacts the lives of people in this community and abroad. The most important thing we need to remember that this is not your church. This is Christ's church. It's his church. Uh, you know, the church is not the building. Now, I, I live across the street from Riverside Baptist. I tell them, go, hey, I'm gonna go over to the church. Well, that's the building. We know what we mean. But the true church is you and me. This body of believers that Christ has put together joined us for the, his whatever purposes that he has. It's his body. We are his body, his people, and God uses his people to build up his kingdom. He uses us. So we have an impact. When we seek the Lord, we have an impact. One of my favorite passages of scripture is found in Acts chapter 2, verses 41 to 47. You've probably heard a dozen sermons on this passage. I've preached this passage um, oh, uh, just a great number of times. And I've probably got about five or six. Uh, and this one here was one that uh, I had prepared uh, without, you know, I, this, this is a fresh one. <laughs> And because uh, the Lord really laid this on my heart as I was looking uh, at, you know, at the backgrounds. This is where our homecoming, I think, is important. It reminds us of our, where we came from and you know, those who influenced us. And it causes us to think back. But as we look at this passage, uh, you, well, anyway, just, just look at this passage and, and see what the early church was doing and how we relate to that. So it starts in verse 41 of chapter 2 of in Acts. So then those who had received the, uh, his word were baptized. And that day there were added about 3,000, I'm sorry, excuse me. That day there were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, 
to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and they were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. I want to look at some of the characteristics of this early church and to show how God can use this body of believers to impact the world around us. There's a key phrase in here that I think is really most important we have to look at. And it, uh, it, it, it says in verse 42, and they were continually devoting themselves. And then, and they said to what? And that's what I'm focusing on right now is uh, some characteristics of this church. See, the church is a fellowship of believers. The church is a fellowship of believers. God's children gather together. I know we're not children anymore, but according to scripture, we are God's children. We're just mature children. Well, most of us. You know, some of us haven't grown up. It's more fun that way, right? So anyway, but you see what was going on is that the people were continually devoting themselves to fellowship. Now we know it's uh, not the you know, next one on the list, but yeah, they were de continually devoting themselves to fellowship. See, they were a living, thriving community whose activity centered around Jesus. They all had something in common. They were the body of Christ brothers and sisters in him. Everyone was invited to become part of the family. When we were born, you know, we were born again into his family, then he adopted us, giving us all the rights of heaven, join heirs with Jesus. We get to share all that Jesus has. We are brothers and sisters. And as a family, they loved one another. Now, if you notice, they did a lot of eating. You see, that's, that fellowship is part of that. That's one of my favorites. But they loved each other. Now, families, um, I have a, a younger sister and my brother had died. And, uh, but my sister and I, well, we got into a few skirmishes. I'm sure you, you know, some of you might have had that same issue with siblings. But don't let anybody, I didn't let anybody mess with my sister. Uh, I love my sister. I love fighting with her. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, well, even with my wife. I mean, I love my wife, but I love to push those buttons to get her riled up. <laughs> yeah, her teasing. Well, we're that way, but you know, we love one another. And the church loves to love one another. The thing is that they shared what they had with one another. They shared what they had with others in need. And as a church family, we're to love one another, to take care of each other. And you know, when someone's hurting, we need to be there to support and encourage one another. Uh, sometimes we come to church and didn't really feel like coming, but just I felt I needed to come. And then somebody in the church family comes along and gives you a hug and, and just says something that just lifts you up. You've been there. You've experienced it. I have. Sometimes we're up, they're down. Sometimes we're down, they're up. We need each other. God put us together. He, it, we are his family. And we share our lives with each other. I love the church. I love the fellowship. Because I've gotten a lot of support and encouragement from everyone. So to be a play, so the church is also an, like one characteristic. The church is to be a place of spiritual growth. The church is to be a place of spiritual growth. That's one of the reasons God established his church. So to be a place of spiritual growth, the church must place, uh, uh, the church must be a place of learning God's word. 
You notice what they said in here. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. Remember, they didn't have the New Testament. It was still being written by the letters. They had the Old Testament. And, and the apostles, the ones who were with Jesus, they're the ones proclaiming the word of Jesus. And so they were studying, they were learning God's word. They were continually devoting themselves to know as learn as much about Jesus as, as possible. See, the people were continually devoting themselves to the, to the apostles' teaching because it's through God's word lives are changed. Well, if you've ever taken an, uh, an evangelism class, you learn scripture. There's the Roman road and you know, passage of scripture. Uh, you know why you learn scripture? Holy Spirit is the author of God's word. Holy Spirit takes God's word and puts it in the hearts of people. He's the one who changes lives. We're just the messenger. We can share our testimonies, but even in our testimonies, we often quote scripture because it's through the scripture, God changes us. One of my life, you're gonna get, you're probably, you're, one of my biggest life-changing experiences was when I was in the Navy, on the board this LST, this, and I know I've mentioned it before, this long ship that opened up in the front, we carried tanks and jeeps and troops in and out of Japan, Okinawa, Vietnam, back and forth, all over. And do it, the ship itself, I mean, that was fine, but we had, we had an abnormally bad number of uh, officers. It was, it was lousy duty. Uh, there's like constant warfare between officers and enlisted and it, it was uh, and, and other things and I was angry I was miserable uh, and my attitude was affecting my relationship with God it was affecting my relationship with Naoko and uh, everything was going downhill we had uh, I think we had seven ships in our squadron and we had a chaplain, that, uh, a squadron chaplain, and he'd take turns uh, sometimes riding the ships. And I knew him from base chapel, and he, we were talking, and he saw I had a problem. He used God's word to convict me to do, well, really, so let's put it in, he used God's word to do some surgery. He says, you know, his word is sharper than a two-edged sword beyond deep. Oh, he had to do some surgery. And he made me realize that I'm on that ship because God put me there, that those officers are there because God put them there, and God is the one who's in control. I don't serve them, I serve him. Them, I need to be the best possible sailor so my light would shine to glorify him. He, he broke me, but he used God's word. Uh, well, I'll even share the passage that uh, impacted me the most. And uh, where, it, uh, it, where he says in, uh, let's see, Colossians. I guess it didn't impact me the most. I, don't see, I, was on, I thought it was at this passage of scripture, but, uh, but it, where it says slaves. And oh yeah, there it is. It is in chapter three. Slaves and all things obey those who are your masters on earth, not with external service, uh, as those merely to please men, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, do you work heartily as for the Lord, rather from men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of your inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Oh, a powerful passage of scripture, because we were, I thought we were on a slave ship. So I really fit in with that. And God used that passage and others to impact my life. See, God's word is to be a major part of our worship services. It may, it needs to, uh, the, God's word needs to be a part of everything this church does. Sunday school, we learn God's word. In worship, we should be teaching and preaching God's word. Yeah. We had some guys back in Japan who, some sailors, uh, when I was uh, in military police at a uh, small communications base on the outskirts of Yokohama, and I was in charge of all vehicle registration control on the base, 
And so I got to know everybody. And, uh, but they had these four or five guys that some went to some Bible study. They were saved. They got, they got right with God. Before, they were out drinking, crousing, and all these other things. But God got hold of them. I'm still in touch with one of them. But they got involved in, they, their lives were changed. They went to Bible studies and, uh, and then at the chapel, in their homes, uh, in different places. They were hungry for God's word. And that's what, and, and God filled them. He, they experienced his, uh, his joy. Because see, God speaks to us through his word. We say, well, I really like to know what God's will is. <laughs> You've got it right here, black and white. When we start obeying or you know, seeing his, God, uh, his will and we start applying his will to our lives and start obeying, then we can hear him for those things that aren't necessarily here. That's still small voice. See, we should desire to continually learn the things of God as revealed in his word. Because I guarantee you, you can look at a passage of scripture, learn, memorize that passage of scripture for years, and then one day you're going to hear something, read something, and say, Oh, I didn't see that. Because it's a living word. His word is alive. And he's always, God is always revealing himself and his will through his word. So the church is to be a place of spiritual growth. And it has to be a place of learn, learning God's word. But it's to be a place of spiritual growth uh, where it's a place of worship. Where the church must be a place of worship. Worship is vital. People continually were, were continually devoting themselves to the to the breaking of bread and the prayer uh, and and the okay the breaking of bread and the prayer and it continued down here where they were continued day, in verse twenty six uh, forty six day by day continuing with one mind in the temple breaking bread from house to house. The breaking of bread is significant. Breaking of bread is what Jesus did at the at the at his last supper. They so when the, the when you see this breaking of bread, you know, we today we say, Oh, let's go break bread. That means let's go get something to eat. Food is involved, but the breaking of bread is the observance of the Lord's Supper, you know, or communion, as a lot of people call it, as we worship. God as we lift him up see we can worship God anywhere we can worship him at any time but it's not the same as worshiping together think about it I've, I've seen some of the most fantastic sunrises I've seen it where it was so dark no moon we could look up and I could see the uh, the Milky Way uh, I I like macro photography. I got pictures of bugs you know, and, and things on tiny flowers. Just seeing God's glory, and and I can worship Him and I lift Him up. Oh sure, I can get out in the water and go fishing or whatever. I can worship Him out there. And the... but there's a difference between worshiping Him in, uh, alone than it is with being together. You know why? Two or three are gathered. Guess what? God's present. And I want to be where God is. You know, see, I, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm another Navy story, sorry. <laughs> uh, only one of my ships had had, I've been on six different ships. And I did have the squadron chaplain ride, but that, that was only one time out of the two and a half years I was on the ship. Another one, uh, we had a large ship with an admiral on board, and we had a chaplain. And, uh, but the other ships, I didn't have worship services. We didn't have a chaplain. We didn't have worship services. And I mean, I could worship God up on the signal bridge, but when I got into port, I, and it was on a Sunday, I went to a church. I worshiped in Japan, of course. I, let's see. Well, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, I think Taiwan, Korea. I you know, may not know everything that's going on, may not understand the sermon, but they're singing in Korean. I, or, yeah, I know that tune, and I'll sing in English. I've done that a lot in Japanese, too. Uh, well, singing in English in the Japanese worship services. 
but there was something about being together with God's people. I could feel the 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 warmth. I could feel the love. I could yeah, the the excitement. The the actually being in the presence of God. Though I didn't understand all that was going there, I was glad to be in the house of the Lord with His people. See, the church in Acts knew the importance of spending time with God uh, in worship. They worship Him daily. They sought to glorify Him, to praise Him for His greatness, His salvation. They sought to experience his presence and his power. They worshiped joyously. They worshiped daily. They were, they, they were excited about what God was doing. You, know, so you can see that the people were you know, taking these meals together with gladness, sincerity of heart, praising God. It was an exciting time. I'd love to be able to see all that excitement uh, Again, and, and, and so being in the presence of God is a time of joy and excitement. See, worship is to be a time of celebration as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate the new life we have in him. We celebrate the hope and the assurance of eternal life with him. We've got a lot to celebrate, a lot to be excited about. But see, to be a place of spiritual growth, the church must be a place of prayer. You notice what it said in here? They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Prayer is what? Talking to God. But what we do is a lot of times we say, okay, we got our list. God, here you go, do this, do that, 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 that. Bye-bye. <laughs> we need to be listening to them too. I mean, you know, some guys say, you know, you know, some guys, uh, the wife does all the talking. Why do I have to talk? She talks all the time, right? But we don't talk to each other. Guess what? Uh, we're missing out on something within our relationship. It's through the talking and the sharing that we grow together in our love for each other, right? It's got to be that communication. And for guys, that has to be, that's hard. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Um, my uncle sometimes has to get my attention. To, oh, blah, blah. <laughs> but we need to do that with God. We need to be paying attention to him. We need to be listening to him, talking with him. You see, prayer provides the power for us to live the life of God as Christ wants us to live. That's where we receive our power to live the Christian life. So you've heard it said, the prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. The same thing with the church. A prayerless church is a powerless church. And you know, prayer provides the channel through which God it works and he uses us. It's like a circuit breaker in a house. I've played with, the, I've played with them and that they live. You know, you got the circuit breaker box, you know, the circuit panel, uh, panel here. And if people without Jesus, is like having an empty spot in that breaker box. There's no connection with God. God, Holy Spirit's the power coming in. And we can, we can give our lives to Christ and we're, we're part of the breaker now, but if we don't turn it on, the power doesn't flow through us, right? Now you can use a 10 amp and you just can't do a whole lot with it, but if you put a 30 amp in, you can start doing something, especially when you double up and you have your 220 in there. Maybe not the best experience, but see, when we have Christ in our lives and we, turn, uh, we flip that breaker on, when we are praying, God is able to use us and empower us and to speak to us. And, and, and when we use that, and when we get close to him, when we get that bigger amperage, we experience more and more of his power. And he uses us in special ways. Prayer draws us close to God. And it, it, it puts us in touch with what he is doing and invites us to join him in whatever it is he is doing. Prayer gives the church the vision of what God can and will do. That's why prayer is so important. Talking to God is so important. God works miracles. But it uses us. But we need to make sure that... We, it's a partnership. We choose. We work together with him. 
See, the church also, uh, one characteristic of the church, the church has a mission. And they're talking here how they were breaking house from meals to meal, praising God and having favor with all the people, and God was adding to their numbers day by day. They were telling others about the great things God was doing. The church was created to reach people with the gospel message. That's why we, he put us together. We have a message of hope because people around us need Jesus. Our church should be a beacon of light surrounding this whole area with his light, offering a message of hope and of love to hurting people who need to learn about Jesus. See, the early church grew as a result of people saying, hey, this is what God's doing. This is what's happening in our lives. Uh, I've had times when I've had people riding with me. Uh, another Navy story. <laughs> Part of our job at uh, the military police, we had a guard mail driver go from our base to Yokosuka Naval Base, which is a two hour drive. And so, when one time we had to take a load of guns down, rifles, other weapons, down to the armory, and I had to go with shotgun. Literally, I had a shotgun in my 45. And, uh, but Dan, he, he, was, he was one of the guys that worked for me. And I tried talking to him about Christ no, I don't believe that stuff. I don't believe that stuff. Well, I'm sorry. After a couple hours, <laughs> you know, I'm talking about some of the things God is doing uh, and, and stuff. Anyway, somehow that message impacted him. And uh, a couple months later, um, he gave his life to Christ. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, we talk about our, our, our kids, our grandkids. Our, uh, things going on in our lives, we talk about it freely. What about our relationship with Jesus? Anybody who's ever had to ride with me, they're going to find out, one, I'm a Christian, and this is what God's been doing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. See, the people openly shared the good news that Jesus gave them new life, how they experienced forgiveness of their sins, and that hope and that assurance of eternal life. And we should want to see people, we should want people to see Jesus in us. And so they, and they can see his joy. So they say, you know, you've gone through some hard times. How can you still smile after all of this? I have Jesus in my life. Jesus makes a difference. And then you've got people who are, yeah, they'll, they'll respond. Notice in here, though, that it says that God added to their number daily. God is the one who causes the growth. God is the one who makes an impact on the lives of the people around us. But he uses us, his church, his people, his children. And so we reach out into the community. We do have an influence. We do make an impact. We may not see it, but God still uses us. And to have, yeah, so gave, yeah, remember, Jesus gave up all the glories of heaven to become one of us in order to suffer and die to pay the penalty for our sins, to make forgiveness of sins possible, and to give us eternal life. And since he's given up so much, he, he wants us to give ourselves to him, to serve him, because he deserves our worship, our prayers, our praise, our service. So as to have an impact on our community, we need to pray. Pray and pray. And that connects us with, you know, prayer connects us with, with the Holy Spirit. And we need to show the love of Jesus to one another, to others within the community. We need to invite people to gather with us. But it all involves a choice. Like I said, it's a partnership. We work with God our Father. He uses us. And when we do, our lives are changed. We grow in our faith. We grow in our love for him. And we get blessed beyond all we can imagine. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your word and, and for what you do in and through your people. We want to see lives change. We want to see this church overflowing. We want to see, and we want to make an impact in our community because you love everyone. You died for all. And I thank you for the salvation you've given us. But there's so many people around us who need you. Some don't know you. Many have rejected you. But I pray that you work on their hearts and work on our hearts to bring everybody together. 
So thank you for this time where we can worship you, to lift up your name, to praise you as we get into your word, as we talk to you through prayer. Continue to work within our hearts and our lives after we leave this place and to be used by you to bring about your glory, your honor, and our blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. On the back of your bulletin, everybody got a bulletin, right? Everybody have one? There's a song in the back I want to do. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I, had, I, I really had to pick this one because it really fit in with the message. And so I, I got to get something to drink here so I can do this. But it's called, We Are God, God Called to Be God's People. And uh, uh, hopefully you know this. And I invite you to stand, please. And if God is doing something in your life, let his will be done as we sing. We are called to be God's people, showing by our lives his grace. One in heart and one in spirit, sign of hope for all the race. Let us show how he has changed us and remade us as his own. Let us share our lives together as we shall around his throne. We are called to be God's servants, working in his world today. Taking his own task upon us, all his sacred words obey. Let us rise then to his summons, dedicate to him our all. Let we may be faithful servants, quick to answer now his call. We are called to be God's prophets, speaking for the truth and right, standing firm for godly justice, bringing evil into light. Let us seek the courage needed our high calling to fulfill that we all may know the blessing of the doing of God's will thank you for your attention and I just pray that God will continue to bless and use you and you just do some really great and wonderful things within your life as, as you go throughout this coming week. Be much in prayer for these who are mentioned. There's a lot of medical things taking place this week. And just show your love and compassion. Lift every one of these up in prayer. Again, Father, thank you for your presence with us. May all we do and say bring glory and honor to you. For you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.